So now let's do the last questions for this paper, which is question 10 and question 11, which is under probability. So let's start with the first one, which is question 10. They say event A, B and C occur as follows, where A, B are independent events, right? So they say probability of A is equal to 0 0.3, probability of B is equal to 0 0.42. Then they say the probability of A and B is equal to 0 0.15. 9, 6, then they tell you that the probability of C is equals to 0 0.28. They tell you the fact are A and B mutually exclusive events, then they say motivate your answer. So the first thing that you need to understand from the question, they actually tell us information. They tell us about event A, B, and C, but they tell us that A and B are what? Independent events. What is independent events? It means the fact that there's an intersection. So if I draw a Venn diagram like this, and I draw two circles of A and B, and I say this is A and this is B. This means the fact that this represents independent events. And we need to understand what is mutually exclusive events. So if I have two circles like this, and this is A and this is B, this represents mutually exclusive, exclusive events, right? MEE, -E, meaning I'm stating the fact that it's mutually exclusive events. So so is A and B mutual, uh, what you call this mutually exclusive? Your answer is no. For the first one is no. Reason why is that A and B are independent, independent events. Because of when it's independent, they intersect each other. When they're mutually exclusive, they, they do not intersect each other. So this and this can't be the same thing at the same time. So that is the first answer for the first question. 10.2, they say by using the appropriate formula show that the value of probability a or b is equal to 0 0.6 so what is the probability of a or b a or b this is the formula is equal to the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a and b right so we have the probability of a which is in our case is 0 comma 38 plus probability of b which is 0 comma 42 minus the intersection which is 0 comma 1596 when you punch this into the calculator you're going to get 0 comma 6 so making the second question done. Then question 10.3, it says calculate the number of sample space, right? I personally feel that they forgot a little piece of information when looking at the memo. I'll show a picture of the memo, but it's that they give us that a in the solution basically they gave a sample as being 456 so for this question let's assume that they gave us the complete information because of there's no way of calculating there's no way of calculating 456 without be giving it like without them giving it to us so let's assume the fact that they actually gave us a as being 456 right and they say that we need to calculate the full sum so let's say it's given so if a is given as 554 right then the sample finding the sample is basically going to be what we know the fact that 0 0.38 right let's say the sample the total sample which is an s right multiply by the probability of a right which is 0 comma 38 is going to give us what it's going to give us this value which is 456 that's how we would find a if we had the original sample right multiplying it by the probability but now we want the full sample so to find the full sample we need to divide both sides by 0 comma 3 so let's do that because we want a and sample alone. So we divide both sides by 0, 0.38. Then n, the 0, 0.38 are going to cancel out here. Then the n sample is going to be equal to what? To 1,200. So this is the total sample of this event or this question. So this is, will be the total sample, which is 1,200. So question 4. 10.4 says find determine n of c complementary right so you need to understand what c complementary
complementary. So C complementary, let's find the probability of C complementary, right? So the formula is basically one minus the probability of C. That's how you find the complementary of any probability, right? So we have what? We have the probability of C. So the probability of P uh, C complementary is going to be one minus 0, 0,28, which it makes it 0, 0,72, right? So we're going to use this to basically find the sum. So we know the fact that we have a total sample and sample of being 1,200, right? And now we want the sample of C complementary. So what is it going to be, right? It's going to be the total sample, right? Multiplied by the probability of the complementary, which is 0, 0,72, which is now, this is N, the sample size of C complementary. And this is going to give us what? It's going to give us 864. And you're done with finding the sample size of C complementary. So now let's move on to question number 11. They say each of the digits 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7 is written in a separate card, right? They say the cards are then placed next to each other to create a six digit number. Then the first question says how many numbers start and end with the same digit? So to make this easy for you guys to see visually, let's say we have the placement of the cards, right? We know the fact that it's six positions. So this is going to be the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and this is going to be the sixth one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me erase this. This one does not exist. Right? So we know the fact that for the first one, right? For 11, for question 11.11, it says it needs to start with the same digit and ends with the same. The same digit here is what is one so it needs to start with one and it ends with one so position one and the last position which is position six is what is constant right they cannot move so now what how many position are you left you left with one two three four so here right taking the fact that from six digits we have subtracted two so what we left we left with four right so here how many people can occupy is four people here how many people occupied if we take like already we took four here's going to be three people here's going to be two people and here's going to be one people if you look at this four multiplied by three multiplied by two multiplied by one is the same as four factorial right so your answer is going to be one multiplied by four factorial multiplied by one which is equals to the same as four factorial which your answer is going to be 24 so you done with the first question so question number two says 11.1.2 says find the probability that the number the number is one one two three four seven or seven four three two one one right so what you need to understand is that this is not a build up from question one i think just understand that part so that you don't use the previous answer or is addition remember that the minute they say oh we need to add the two right so we need to find the probability of one one two three four seven and also find the probability of seven four three two one one so what's this how can we arrange this first we need to find the denominator number right so it's gonna be we need to look for how many times can we arrange this we have how many digits one two three four five six so it's going to be six digits six victorial since one are repeated we're going to divide it by two factorial and we're going to get 360 if you notice it's the fact that this is the same thing for the seven four two uh three two one one right so even for so this one is for one one two three four seven this 360 is going to be the same for this one because of its six digit and also with that one seven four three two is also repeated so it's going to be the same number so we have 360 here and we're going to have 360 here too which is seven four three two one one we're gonna have the number of ways to arrange it which is to gonna be 360 then they want the probability right so we need to find the probability of one one two three four 
four seven right since one one uh three two four seven it's the only one it's the only order so it's going to be equals to one divided by 360 and also here the probability of seven four three two one one is going to be one divided by 360 the reason is one is because of it's the only order that can be there it's only one of it right this whole thing is one of it so now they want the probability of this and this they want the probability of this and this and they said oh when they say oh we add so it's the probability of one one or so it's going to be the probability of this one which is going to be one divided by 360 plus one divided by 360 which is the same as two divided by 360 when you simplify it you're going to get your probability to be so it's going to be one divided by 180 and that would be your final answer for 11.12 okay so now we're doing the last question for this paper aren't you guys excited because i am for you guys but for me but the question says and people numbered one till n are arranged randomly in a line then they say find the number of ways in terms of n that person one and person two are sitting next to each other right so before we do it in terms of n i want to do it in terms of just numbers let's say people number one till seven right so we have a total of seven people n is equals to seven let's make n equals to seven right they tell us the fact that um they are as they said the same question they tell us the fact that person one and person two are sitting in the same position so person one person one right and person two are sitting in the same position right are sitting next to each other so they are together like this right then the rest of them which is person three person four person five person six and person seven so this is going to be person uh three person four person five person six person seven so looking at this one as being one let me make looking at this being one right looking at this let's start with looking at this one being one position right how many positions do we have we have one two three four five six right because of person one and person two needs to be next to each other so this is going to be what six factorial right so it's going to be six factorial right but it does not end there because if they told us they didn't say uh person one and person two uh position are like stable like only person one can sit in the first position and person two can only sit in the second position person one and person two can change position so that is why this is going to be multiplied by the two factorial because of person one and person two can change position so your answer here is going to be six factorial multiplied by two factorial right so that's how you would answer it so looking at the same mindset the fact that if we have say if we have seven people right and they tell us that one and two are sitting next to each other it's going to be this one is the same as the first one is the same as n minus one right Right? because of seven minus one is going to give you six so this is the same as n minus one factorial multiplied by two factorial to answer your previous question so your answer here is actually two factorial multiplied by n minus one right so we have answered the question by this there's a little thing that they did in the memo which is, I do not get why they did it, but they actually did it. They actually gave us an answer for when, uh, in what you call this, when position one, when person one and person two are not sitting together, right? So let me just write it for the sake of writing it. So if they're not sitting together, not sitting next to each other, what happens is going to be the total number, which is n, right? Minus what? Two factorial multiplied by n minus 1. Then we are done with this paper. So this will be your final solution.